this This will This will come Let it begin with me Shalom friends and fellow seekers I'm Mo Scott a proud member of the Musar Institute's Havarim community and I'm here with Dr. Alan Marinus, founder of the Musar Institute, in anticipation of TMI's upcoming Kala on January 31st to February 2nd, 2021. Alan, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Mo. I'm so grateful for you, you doing this. Alan, we're here on behalf of the organization you created. What inspired you to dedicate your life to making Musar a part of ours. When I came upon Musar, and it was really very enriching for me, very sustaining, very practical in that it accompanied me in my life every day. I mean, I called my book Everyday Holiness for good reason, because that's what I was finding. It was not something that happened in any particular context. It was relevant in all contexts. And so the more I, probed into it, the more I found value in it and found ways of applying it in my own life, the more it became clear to me that I was a spiritual orphan finding my way back to my natural spiritual family. And I was not alone in that, that I was a, a member and a representative of a large group of people who actually felt the same, who felt that there was no lineage that they had not received the transmission of any spiritual guidance through a lineage. The more I became aware of the lineage and the teachers and the teachings and the richness and the value and the, and the, the beauty and the utility, I began to feel more obligated. I began to feel, you know what? Everybody I'm studying made these teachings available so that people like me could find them and now that I found them, I look around and there's a lot of other people who have no inkling that this is part of the Jewish world. And the more it became valuable to me, the more it also became an obligation on me to say other people should have access to this too. I think it's safe to say that this year has challenged each one of us in body, in mind, and in soul. What does Musar have to teach us that can help us through this time? The fact that the Musar teachers come from many centuries and many places in history, many of which experienced eras of uh, division and uh, unsettledness, war, loss, epidemics, they were writing and giving us tools from their much less comfortable, much less secure, much more unsettled lives than we are, than we have. And, and therefore it becomes a very valuable playbook to draw on, to become aware of what, how is this affecting me? And what tools can I bring to bear to say, well, I just need to keep myself on an even keel. You know, I don't need to, be dancing through the streets in joyous celebration every day, but nor do I need to be going to the depths of despair and whatever else might come out of that. The question is just to be, be on an even keel, to have equilib equilibrium and equanimity is, is my understanding of how to weather a storm like this. And, uh, and there's a lot of tools in the Muslim tradition to teach us how to have equanimity how to be, the, the image I like to use is being uh, that of a surfer. Now, a surfer doesn't curse the waves. The question is, how do you stay upright in the waves, not get flattened by them, not wish them to go away? You can't do that, but just ride the waves and stay with it and be present and alive and have resources and have tools that'll help you come through this in the best possible way that you can. And that's, that's the best we can do. That sounds to me like a very high objective. The theme of this year's Kala is seeking shalom 
inside and out. Alan, how do you define shalom? Pretty much everybody knows the word shalom right now. And the word shalom, among other meanings, it's sort of most central meaning is peace. That really relates to uh, that ultimate source of meaning when you're looking into something in the Jewish world, which is the Hebrew language itself, because the word shalom comes from the root that shows up in two other words that are very relevant. One is shalem, which means whole or complete. Wholeness is actually the root understanding of peace. Things have to be whole in order that there can be peace. And I find that a tremendous insight and a tremendous help because it doesn't mean that in order to pursue peace, all you have to do is like calm down and bliss out. It actually goes in another direction. It says, if you want to have peace, you have to make all the parts whole. It really is true about ourselves as well. You know, it's a um, very typical Jewish greeting is to say Shalom Aleichem, which means peace be upon you. If I as an individual meet you as an individual, I, sp I still speak you in the plural. Why am I addressing you in the plural? And the answer that I heard that I liked the best was that you're not just one thing. Like every human being is a composite. You're a mind, you're a spirit, you're a body, your emotions, you're, everyone's a composite. So what I'm wishing you with Shalom Aleichem is, may all your parts be whole, and may all your parts be at peace. So I need to speak to you in the plural. And um, so, you know, I think that that's why this theme of the Kala is about that the fact of being the inner and the outer, that's a common element. It's not that you need to go into a dark room and meditate and you'll be peaceful, even though there's civil unrest in the streets. It's that, no, these things are not disconnected. And the wholeness of the whole, the whole picture, the, all the elements, the internal elements and the outernal, external elements, they're all part of the same challenge. And the challenge is to make things whole and the fruit is peace. And may this Kala be as fruitful an experience for all of us. Thanks again for joining me, Alan. And thank you for watching. Until we meet again, on behalf of the Musar Institute, we wish you a happy Hanukkah and a new year filled with shalom inside and out. Oh, let my life be lived for the good, good of my soul. Let it bring peace, sweet peace. Peace will come. Let it begin.